guys, as you're able, if you will, let's stand and begin to worship together. Into marvelous light I'm running, out of darkness, out of shame. By the cross you are the truth, you are the life, you are the For the good Lord. 
you've seen Don't know what you've been through All I know is my God Will never let go of you Will never let go He'll never, never, never let go Boy, do I love the lyrics of that song, no matter what. I know a lot of times in life, we feel like we just do not deserve the love and forgiveness that our Savior gives us. Um, he gives it freely. We don't have to deserve it. That's what's so great. And I love that. It just reminds us no matter what, it is an unconditional, it is a relentless, overpowering, just amazing love that he lavishes upon us. Uh, Trey and I love that word, so we try to use it as often as possible. But that is the best way to describe the way he loves us no matter what. So we're excited to have all of you guys here with us today. You can see that we're about to have some uh, some celebration together as a family. But um, I missed y'all last week. I was moving my daughter down to Orlando, um, and I'm going to miss her. I know some of you guys like hearing her sing with me, so I'm hoping I can get her back here in time, like for Christmas or something. But Maybe if you want to add that to the prayer list, you know, that you would join this mother's heart because not having her sing on Christmas is just crazy. But um, anyway, glad to have all of y'all here. Welcome to those of you guys joining us online. Um, right now, if I can, I'm going to turn your attention to the screen so we can check out this week's announcements. Hey, Noah. Hey. Can you do me a favor? Can you please go ask Sam when Oliver Wednesday activities will be returning? I will do that. Thank be right you. Back. Hey Sam, yeah. Annabelle would like to know when all of our Wednesday activities will be returning. All of our Wednesday night activities start back this Wednesday. You have a Tuesday connect group that also starts this Tuesday. So make sure you're here for all that. Thanks. Why can't, why can't I just ask you? <laughs> because the bit of the video is that we're getting people uh -huh. that and we're just sending them back and forth to each other to get them to say the announcement. But the setup is that she is telling you to tell me something. So I, oh, I have to record her? I'm going to go ahead and go and record. So yeah. that way we don't have to do anything. And then she'll sit and then tell her to send her back, send you back to me. So get her to tell me, <laughs> to ask you. Yes. <laughs> when life group starts. Connect groups, yes. Connect groups. Yes. So I can't just ask you right now. No. So I need to be stuff. recording her when I do it? Yes. Is it recording right now? Yes, everything's on. How am I, how am I supposed to tell? I can't see anything. Okay. Sam said to do the bit again, and then I'm going to go ask him because I messed it up. Okay, what I need you to do is I need you to take this camera over to Annabelle right there, and I need you to ask her how much longer the Breakfast Bros are going to be here. What? The Breakfast Bros are going to be here. Okay. How do I... Just like, yep, just like that, and then... Yo. How long are the Breakfast Bros... Uh, how long are the Breakfast Bros going to be here? That's a really good question, Boone. The Breakfast Bros food trip will be here from this Sunday to every single Sunday on August until August 3rd. So that should be not this Sunday, not the next Sunday, but the following Sunday. You want to take the microphone back? <laughs> okay, tell Sammy you dropped it, please. I need you to do me a favor. Will you go find Annabelle for me and then ask her when Back to Church Sunday is? <laughs> Hey, Annabelle, when is <laughs> no, Back to Church Sunday? Um, that's really funny that you asked me that. Um, it just so happens that Church Sunday is September 17th, and we are really excited. We hope that all of you get to be there. Back to Church Sunday, you better come. Hey, Sam, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> 
guess that's gonna, stay, that's gonna stay in the announcement. Hey, hey, Sam. Sam. Hey, Sam. Yes. Can you please post the announcements for us? Hey, uh, make sure you get tagged with us. Facebook page, website, YouTube, Instagram, all of those things. Download our app, Google Play Store, the other one. Uh, and as always, we'll see you next week. Bye. Anybody seen Annabelle? Uh, just want to make sure we find Annabelle out there. Um, we are excited to uh, welcome you. You can tell uh, from just that little part of the video that we had a great time Wednesday night. What a, a lot of fun. To getting ready to kick off our new um, uh, educational year. Uh, and we are just so excited about that. So many opportunities. 20 different life groups for adults. And then something for children, something for uh, our uh, youth and just what a great great opportunity and something for our college age group We'll talk about that in just a few minutes uh, Today is a great day of celebration Today is a day when we have some baptisms here and uh, And if you've never been a part of us uh, of a service where we've done baptisms I just want to share with you that we really celebrate that when somebody gets baptized we cheer You know when they get the water put on their head or whenever they uh, go up under the water and come back out They we cheer for that. That is fantastic that we're celebrating the greatest decision they will ever make in their whole life and so that's, if all of heaven is throwing a party, I believe it's all right that we join in. And so uh, for those who are being baptized, I just want to remind you, your family members are welcome to move around and shift around and get pictures, take videos, whatever you would like to do. We are uh, wide open to that. And everybody else, you know your cue. Whenever they get baptized, let's celebrate that, all right? Um, I have got a whole pile of things in my hand. I need to get out of my hand there. But as we get ready for the baptism, uh, and before we bring up the individuals who are going to be baptized, I want to just share with you the importance of baptism. So, dearly beloved, for as much as all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and our Savior Christ said, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I beseech you to call upon God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, that of His bounteous goodness He will grant that these persons may receive the forgiveness of their sins, be baptized with water and the Holy Spirit, and may uh, <clears throat> be received into Christ's holy church and be made a living member of the same. Will you pray with me? Almighty and everlasting God, the aid of all who need and the helper of all, who, uh, of, all of us, you are the life of all who believe and the resurrection of the dead. We call upon you for these your servants as they coming to your holy baptism may receive remission of their sins and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive them, Lord, as you have promised by your well-beloved Son and grant that they may be faithful to you all the days of their lives and finally come to the eternal kingdom which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to start right over here. All right. At this time, I want to invite Sherry to come up. So you can stand right there for a second. Sherry, you are come here desiring to receive holy baptism. We have prayed that God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, would grant to receive you and release you from sin, sanctify you with the Holy Spirit, and give you the kingdom of heaven and everlasting life. Do you truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and do you accept Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Yeah. Do you uh, believe in God the Father, and in Jesus Christ His Son, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? Yes. Do you desire to be baptized in this faith? then will you do your best to live for Jesus your whole life? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, grant that all sinful affections may die in this your servant, Sherry, and that all things belonging to your spirit may live and grow in her. Grant that she may have the power and strength to triumph over evil and may receive the fullness of your grace and may ever remain in the number of your faithful and beloved children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Sherry, will you s s tell everybody your whole name? My name is Sherry Sturm. All right. Sherry, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. You stand up. All right. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to invite you to stand, stay right there for just a few minutes. I'll bring you back up. Yeah. This time I want to invite Victoria to come on over. Hey, Victoria. Well, Victoria, <clears throat> you are come here desiring to receive holy baptism. We have prayed that God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, would grant to receive you, release you from sin, sanctify you with the Holy Spirit, and give you the kingdom of heaven and everlasting life. Victoria, do you truly and earnestly repent of your sins and accept Jesus as your Savior? Uh, do you believe in God the Father? And in Jesus Christ, his Son, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Do you desire to be baptized in this faith? Then will you do your best to live for Jesus your whole life? Will you pray with me? Merciful God, grant that all sinful affections may die in this your servant, Victoria, and that all things belonging to your spirit may live and grow in her. Grant that she may have the power and strength to triumph over evil, may receive the fullness of your grace, and ever remain in the number of your faithful and beloved children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Victoria, state your whole name. Victoria Marie Lopez. Excuse me, Pete, pull this. That's all right. Victoria Marie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> All right. Now, Miss Cecilia, come on up. <laughs> yeah, you take my hand, yeah? There you go, and step right up through here. Perfect. Come on down and sit down right there. All right, don't float away on me, okay? Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, Cecilia, you have come here desiring to receive holy baptism. We have prayed that God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, would grant to receive you, release you from sin, and sanctify you with his Holy Spirit, and give you the kingdom of heaven and everlasting life. Now, Cecilia, are you truly sorry for your sins and ask Jesus to be your Savior? Uh, do you believe in God the Father and in Jesus Christ, His Son, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? Do you desire to be baptized in this faith? Then, Cecilia, will you do your best to live for Jesus your whole life? Yeah. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, Grant that all sinful affections may die in this, your servant, Cecilia, and that all things belonging to your spirit may live and grow in her. Grant that she may have the power and strength to triumph over evil and may receive the fullness of your grace and ever remain in the number of your faithful and beloved children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, Cecilia, tell everybody your whole name. All right. All right. Knows. Cecilia Grace, I own, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All right. <laughs> All right. It's fantastic. All right. There you go. Stay, and stand right there. I know it's going to be cold for a second, but we got your robe there. So I want to invite Sherry and Victoria to come up here and stand beside Cecilia. I tell you, that does a mom and dad's heart good, don't it, Nick? <laughs> uh, I want us to. I want to remind you, three ladies, of something very, very important. Y'all are not in this journey by yourself. Uh, as you look out and every single Christ follower that is in this room and every Christ follower in the world, y'all are a part of that family. 
So it's a pretty big family. You don't have to send out Christmas cards, but it's still a pretty big family. And we are in this journey with you, and we get a chance to learn from you, and you get a chance to learn from us. So we are partnering with them, and I always ask every one of us, if you are a Christ follower, and if you will accept your part in being a part of their life and speaking into their life and having them speak into your life, will you give me a good hearty amen? Amen. Oh, that was really good. Remember that when I preach, all right? So before the, we have these ladies sit down, uh, I'll, and one, go get warm, uh, I would like for us to pray over them, okay? Will you join me in prayer? Father, what a great day of celebration as we celebrate with Sherry and Victoria and Cecilia today. We celebrate a decision they have made to follow you with their whole heart. We celebrate the fact that Christ has entered their heart and saved them and forgiven them of their sins. We celebrate that we join together as a church family to surround them and to support them, to be with them as they are on this journey, as they join us on our journey in our faith. So, Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving for this day and for this opportunity to celebrate with these beautiful, beautiful ladies. Continue to work in their heart, help them as they grow to uh, be full disciples of you, as they follow you with everything they've got, and be with us as a church family as we continue to surround them and be a part of their lives, and they be a part of ours. To you be all the glory, Father, for it's in your precious Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate one more time with these ladies. All right. All right. So... You can be seated. Yeah, you can go get change if you'd like. Hey, you want your shoes? All right. I tell you, that is always great. And I am so thankful that we have our uh, folks from our children's department come in. Are these young people coming in and seeing what this is all about and understanding uh, and beginning their, their understanding of what it means to follow Jesus too. So that is an exciting time also. Um, we have several prayer requests that come in throughout the week. We want to invite you to be in prayer <clears throat> uh, uh, for the folks that are on our prayer list, the folks that we add. And I have lost my list, sorry. There it is. Um, I want to invite you to uh, continue to pray for David Taylor. David uh, has already has made it home, and is he back in his seat back there? Yeah, he's back here. David, after your wreck, we prayed for you, brother. We're glad to have you back and, uh, and recovering. We are certainly thankful for that. I want to invite you to continue to pray for his recovery from his car wreck. I want to invite you to be in prayer. Uh, again, I ask for my, for prayer for my Aunt Liz. She is having a heart procedure tomorrow uh, up in... Uh, uh, Opelika, Alabama, so please pray for her. Um, we have a very, uh, we have a ministry that has begun over the last few months called our Hope and Help Team. They are a group of volunteers that have uh, volunteered to help uh, in so many, many ways in times of crisis and, and helping people walk through different things. We have some trained volunteers that uh, are, you know, some, many of them, uh, some of them have been counselors uh, and are trained counselors. Some of them uh, are volunteers that have, have some training, but they may not have the certification there. But they're there to walk along with you. But they're growing their ministry. And I want to remind you of that and invite you, if you would like to be a part of it, they are our Hope and Help team is beginning a partnership with a ministry in our area called Share Your Heart. Uh, Share Your Heart is looking for people who are willing to be chaplains, uh, volunteer chaplains, to help out in their ministry. Uh, If you would like more information about what that means and how you can be a volunteer chaplain, uh, we want to invite you to talk to Miss Bonnie Perkins. We will connect you with her. Uh, Just let us know that you're interested. We'll make sure she gets your contact information and you get her contact information and you can join together. And uh, if you would like to help with the Hope and Help team, but also if you would like to be trained as a chaplain to work with... uh, share your heart. Um, The training is, uh, I think, 16 hours, and uh, it's very specific in what they're asking you to do. So if you're interested in that, it's a volunteer thing. So if you're interested in that, let us know. We'll connect you with Bonnie uh, as we are growing that ministry. 
Um, if you have a prayer request for us, we want to invite you to uh, uh, let us know about that. Several ways you can do that. One way is through this little slip of paper. Uh, that is in your bulletin or in the back of your seats. Uh, everybody can fill out the top part. The middle part, you can let us know what uh, that request is. Uh, excuse me, there's some questions there. At the bottom, you can let us know what the request is that you have, and we'll be praying for you. Uh, we want to invite you to pray for Erin and Danielle's daughter. She is uh, facing some, um, uh, some health uh, questions, so be in prayer for her as she is going through that time also. Um, we, uh, you can let us know also through our app. You can send in your prayer requests. Those of you joining us online, you can let us know through the link below this feed. And if you are, uh, would like to speak to any one of us on staff, we will bring those requests to our table as we pray for you tomorrow, uh, tomorrow as we meet together. So when you fill out that paper, just drop it in the offering basket as you leave uh, the service in a few moments. Will you pray with me? Our precious Father and our loving God, we want to thank you so much for what you do for us. We want to thank you for how much you are with us and how you always, always are there for us. You are a great and awesome and powerful God. And we are thankful that we can always lean on you and depend on you and trust in you. We are thankful for the hope that we find in you, Father. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just continue to guide our steps as individuals, that you would guide our steps as a church. May we continue to reach out into this community. May we continue to be a, shine, a, a reflection of the shining light of Jesus in this community. May we be open to the moving of your Spirit in every way and at all times. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for loving us so much. And right now, Father, we thank you that you are the first and the greatest giver. Everything we have comes from you. And we thank you for blessing us with so, so much. For it's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. If you are new with us, this may be your first Sunday here. You may have been here once or twice. Uh, and you may have heard me say this before. If you've been here before... The, we invite folks to stick for six with us. That means stay with us for six Sundays. And uh, I understand life happens. Sometimes you might not be able to do six Sundays in a row. If you can, that's great. If not, but stick with us for six Sundays and get to know who we are and uh, let us get to know you. Let us know how you can walk. Uh, we can help you with your walk with Christ or help you if you've got questions about the faith or questions about your journey. We want to try to help you out in any way we can. But stick for six Sundays with us and get to know us because each Sunday is different. In some way, it's different. So we invite you to get to know us. Um, we want to do a little celebrating this morning. Uh, we try to give you a monthly update on our uh, cost of our, our, our fundraising for our disaffiliation cost from our former denomination. Uh, that call, The full amount that we're raising is $478,852 to be precise. Uh, that is what we are raising. And so each month I want to let you know how much we have raised. And we have, do we have a thermometer there to let you know where we are? We are at $192,000. So... So what, I mean, we're three months in. God is blessing us. We want to invite you to continue to help partner with us. We invite folks, when you give to the Freedom Fund, we are inviting you to give above and beyond your regular giving. Uh, your regular giving goes towards helping the ministries that we have in the church. This fund that we are raising, uh, that goes to pay off a one-year loan that we have. And so June 28th, to be precise, is when that is fully due. So uh, be in prayer for us as we are moving down that journey. But look at that, almost halfway there. Uh, and we believe God's going to continue to bless that. If you brought, you know, if, to give to our general fund or also to give to the Freedom Fund, you can click on that um, QR code that we have there. You can also go through um, our Woodbine Church app. Those of you joining us online, there is a link uh, below the feed where you can give in that way. And then there is a link, uh, or there is a text to give number in your bulletin. And for the offering you brought with you, you can drop that in the offering basket. So thank you for supporting the ministry of Woodbine Church and our community. You help us continue to fulfill the call that God has placed on our church, this church. 
in this community. So thank you so much for that. We invite our youth at the end of this next song. We invite you to meet Mr. Trey out in the atrium to go to your life group. Uh, And I want to invite us all to continue in the service. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Cause Jesus paid it all, and all to him I and stain he washed it white as
each and every one of us is just marked by the sin. And without you, Lord, that stays, that stain stays upon us. But because of the, because, Father, of the, the gift of your son, each one of us is washed clean. Your son came to pay our debt, a debt that none of us could possibly ever be able to repay. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we've been able to just come and express to you our love and our gratitude for everything that you do for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for the word that you've put on the heart of Thomas today. Lord, I just ask that it will minister to each and every one of us, Father, that we will be enlightened, that we will be we will be emboldened, Father, that we will have a new understanding of your word today. So, Father, we thank you for this day. We look forward with anticipation for what it will bring in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Uh, you are in for a treat today. Uh, I have high expectations, Thomas. Uh, I want to, uh, some of you, uh, or all of you have been here before, you've seen Thomas, you've seen him playing his guitar, you've seen him uh, playing the keyboards, you've heard him sing, you've heard him doing all of those kinds of things. Uh, he is our, uh, our uh, music assistant, I just totally lost your title, sorry Thomas, you'll make it though. Uh, he, is our, <laughs> he helps Chrissy out, there you go, I'm just going to say that. Uh, but that's not all that Thomas does on staff. Thomas also has uh, some other duties that he does. Thomas works with our college age ministry. Uh, and with the college ministry and college classes starting back up, we want to let you know about what he does. Thomas and Jessica, are work, his wife, work in uh, partnership with that. They bring along their uh, three uh, beautiful children, Henry, Aubrey, and Nora. Uh, they have already been an active part of this church for a while, and they've been doing this ministry amongst the college age crowd for uh, a couple of years now, right? Just uh, at your house. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and so that's not all that he does. On Wednesday nights, he also has a young adult uh, uh, class that he and Jessica lead together, uh, and he can probably tell you a lot more about those than I can. And then he has a vision of something that's getting ready to happen uh, in the very near future. Uh, Thomas, along, is partnering, uh, is leading our church to partner with a couple of other churches to come together to offer a college-age uh, worship service night here at Woodbine. And so they're going to be partnering together. That's coming in the future. You'll be hearing more about that later on as we get down the road to uh, get that started. But uh, we're real excited about that opportunity to have that uh, night of worship during the week for uh, our college-age group. Um, and again, you have any questions about the college age ministry, young adult ministry, talk to Thomas. He would love to talk to you about that. But before he preaches, uh, and this is his first time. You've heard him do a lot of other things. This is his first time to preach here. So uh, he's, he's not nervous at all. So we're just going to pray over him as he gets ready. All right, will you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for Thomas. Thank you for the word that you've placed on his heart. Thank you, Father, for working in his life. Thank you for he and Jessica and their children and, and the active part they play here uh, at uh, Woodbine Church and what they do to continue to reach uh, people with the word of Jesus. We thank you so much for that. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just speak through him today. I pray that you would help us to have open and receptive hearts to the word that you've placed on his heart. And I pray, Father, you would take complete editorial privilege. You change what needs to be changed. You keep in what needs to be kept in. May everything that he says come directly from you to us. We just pray for an anointing of your spirit upon him and that we would hear from you through your servant Thomas today. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you, brother. Well, I'm a, a lot more nervous than I thought I was going to be, but that's all right. Uh, I think I would rather pick up the guitar and just play some songs than do this, but that's okay. So about a year ago, or a little more, I came to Pastor Jimmy with an idea of a sermon. Um, I had kind of the outline of it, the kind of the flow of it, how it would go. And, uh, you know, he gave me some good advice to how to proceed with writing it. So after that, I, got, I was 
kind of encouraged. I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm excited. So I start writing it. And then about maybe a week or so later, Pastor Jimmy comes back to me and goes, hey, when you finish writing that sermon, do you want to preach it? And I was like, I've never really thought about it. I don't know why I was wanting to write a sermon and not preach it, but that's where I was. So I was like, yes, I'll do it. I'm excited. Uh, what I've got going on right now, I'm, I'm excited about. So yes, let's do that. So I get excited. I start writing it. And you may be thinking to yourself, did this sermon take you a year? <laughs> yes and no. Um, let's just say I got, I got about three-fourths of the way done with it and thought to myself, wait, I don't really want to go up there and preach. So I, I stopped and, and hoping that Pastor Jimmy would just forget that he asked me to do this. And it took him a little while to remember <laughs> that he asked me to do it. And so I had to proceed further and actually finish the writing. So, Pastor Jimmy, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this. But also, if this doesn't go well, we know whose fault it is. He's the one who asked. <laughs> so if you need to talk to him, he'll be out in the uh, lobby afterwards. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. My very first sermon, I am going to drop a theological bombshell on everyone in here. Are you ready for it? I don't think anyone has ever heard this before, but we're going to do this. And you're going to help me. You'll see in the sermon notes in your, in your, uh, in your program that there's no title. That's because you're going to help me deliver the title. All right, ready? The first word, I want everyone to say it when it comes up. Yes. Next one. Yes. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure no one has ever heard that before. Minds have been blown. And uh, we can move on from there. Actually, this is the whole sermon, and have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> so just like uh, Pastor Jimmy said, my name is Thomas. I am the uh, college and young adult uh, minister, and I also am the worship assistant. There's the word he couldn't remember earlier. Um, I grew up in the church. I attended the uh, Salvation Army uh, through my young years all the way up to uh, kind of the younger adult years of my life. And then a few years ago, my family and I started coming here. Uh, I am married, have my beautiful wife over there. We've been married for 15 years. Actually, this last Wednesday was our anniversary. So 15 years, we have three kids, Aubrey, Henry, and Nora. And uh, growing up in the church, I found myself getting like stagnant and complacent with sermons that I would hear. I would sit in church and go, man, that was a great sermon. I should take that out with me to the rest of my life. But then the sermon went in, I'd get up, walk out of the church, and that sermon would stay right there in that, that seat. So my, my church life and my outside life were completely separated. I learned a lot in church, but I didn't take it with me out there. So my prayer became, and hopefully our, all of our prayers would be, that no matter what happens, we can keep our focus and our, our thoughts on what God has for us. That, uh, that we'd be open to the Holy Spirit and what the uh, direction that the Holy Spirit is leading us. So, what is sin? If you've been in church any amount of time, or even outside of church, you've probably heard the word sin. And I'm sure you've been through Bible studies to teach you what it is. But let's see what the Bible says about sin. Here's four verses. The first verse would be in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Everyone who makes practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Next verse is Romans chapter 14, 23. Whatever is not from faith is sin. James 4, 17, and this one right here gets me. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. And then the last one here, 1 John 5, 17. 
All unrighteousness is sin. So all sin, sin is breaking God's law. As the scripture just said, sin is lawlessness. I know this is uh, probably not the best subject to bring up for my first sermon, but it is. And because no one likes to hear that what they're doing is wrong. I know uh, from personal experience when someone tells me that I'm wrong, even if I know that I'm wrong, I still will argue with you that I'm not wrong. I'm sure my wife has a lot of stories of that. It would be so much easier to come to church and hear about all the pleasant things about the scriptures and how much God loves us. And and don't get me wrong, God does love us. He really does. He loves you just the way you are. And he wants you to come to him just the way you are. But God loves us enough not to keep us that way. God will meet you where you are, but he doesn't want you to stay there. So just like the woman who was about to get stoned, and Jesus said to the crowd, those who have have not sinned, cast the first stone. Well, that wasn't the end of that story. When everyone walked away, Jesus looked at her and said, go and sin no more. Jesus didn't save her so that she would continue to live in the sin that she was already in. He wanted her to change. He wanted her to give up her old life and have a new life in him. Because the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So I think we can all agree that my sermon title is right on point. Sin is bad. Right? But have, we, have you ever really thought, and I really haven't, even though I grew up in church, what the consequences of sin is? I'm sure we've all heard this one verse right here. Romans 6, 23 it says, For the wages of sin is death. But also there's Romans 5, 12 that says this, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, so death spread to all men, because all have sinned. So, because of sin, we all die. That, that's what the scripture just said. Sin causes death. Not a very happy thing to talk about, right? But there is one part that sin, there's another consequence that sin causes that I think is worse than the death part. I know that's a little strange, but hear me out here. In Isaiah 59, 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that that he will not hear. And then also uh, Thessalonians 1, 9 also says, They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of God and and from the glory of his might. So that part to me right there is worse than the death. Is that separation of God. We won't be with him anymore. The mighty creator of everything, our loving father, we have been separated. I think we can all know what the fear of death looks like. I think we've probably all been there before. But have you ever really thought about what that separation of God feels like? I know we can't really know what it is now because God never leaves us right now. But at one point, you know, you're going to have that you, sometimes you've had that hopelessness or, or fear that no one's with you. Well, that separation of God is that feeling, but there is no joy in the morning. There, nothing will ever come. It will always be that despair. So let's sum up what we've got so far. So sin is breaking God's law. Sin causes death. And sin separates us from God. So growing up in the church, I never did take sin as seriously as I should have. I thought because every time the door opened at church, my parents had me there. Now, of course, I wasn't going willingly at some times, but every time that church door opened on Sundays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Tuesdays, whatever it was, we were in the church. It didn't matter. And so I had this thought like, oh, I'm in the church, so I'm good. I had this, I'm looking at everybody else going, 
well, I'm not sinning like that person is, so I'm good. Or I'd watch the news and someone got arrested for, I don't know, killing 15 people and go, I'm not him, so I must be doing all right. But not only is that a bad way to think about things, it's really unbiblical too. Because the scripture tells us in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. So just because I thought, oh, I'm better than them, I'm no better than anyone else because it, just because my sins are different doesn't make me any better. Because we are a flawed and sinful people. I will go ahead and say it. I'm not asking you to. I am a bad person. And I can prove it with Scripture. Just take a look at the Ten Commandments. I'll answer these questions. You can answer them to yourself. I'm not asking anyone else to say it out loud. Have you ever lied? I have. Have, I ever, have you ever stolen anything? Number two. Number three, have you ever wanted something else that somebody had? Coveting? Been there. So that's three of the Ten Commandments that I've broken right there. So that makes me a covetous, lying thief. I am not a good person. And these are the only three I'm willing to admit to you here on stage. <laughs> there are more, but I'm not gonna go, um, we're not going to go that far. I want to apologize. I know I just told everybody in here that you're, you're not a good person, but I'm sorry. I, I apologize for that. But really, I didn't say it. The scripture said it. So this is the place right here where I was talking about earlier where I stopped. This is where I stopped. Probably not the greatest place to stop because all in my mind the whole time from when I stopped to I started writing again was, wow, I, I'm a terrible person. I am really unworthy of what God has for me. I don't deserve any grace or any mercy or anything like that. But even though that was probably not the best place, it did put me in the mindset of thinking about my sin and what I'm doing on a daily basis. It kept me in the mindset of go, I don't need to do that. I have the temptation to do it, but I need to hold back up a little bit. But the good thing is, I finished writing this, and that's not where the story ends. Separation from God, death, that's, that's not where it ends. The good thing is, that anything, and everything that we've done against God, breaking his laws and his commandments, he still wants to spend eternity with us. And there are two words that every person would love to hear from God, which is grace and mercy. Amen. God's grace is usually defined as undeserved favor. We don't deserve it, but he gives it anyway. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not by your own doing. It is the gift of God. There's nothing that we can do to receive grace. We can't work hard enough or good enough to receive grace. It is a gift from God. The second word is mercy. And mercy is withholding the punishment that we all deserve. And let's be honest with what I just said about myself. I honestly feel like I deserve to be punished. But God's mercy is what keeps us from receiving that punishment. God's mercy shows up, shows us, shows up in his forgiveness and withholding all the punishment we deserve. So Ephesians 2, 4 through 5 says, but God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he, but with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins or trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. God sent his only son to die on the cross so you can spend eternity with him. Have you ever really thought about that or put that thought like in your what your daily life would look like to go here's my son I'm going to sacrifice my son to save people 
that sometimes hate me don't believe I even exist. But my son is going to die for them anyways because I love you that much. That, that doesn't make sense to me. I can't fathom that type of love, but that's the love that God gives us. Although his grace and mercy are freely given and will never run out, we do have a time limit on to accept that gift. Because when we die, we've either accepted the gift or not. Because another thing the Bible says about God is that he's just. So in Romans 14.10 it says, For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess to God, so then each of us will give an account of himself to God. We make our choice, and, and we have our choice to make right then if we're going to accept that grace or mercy, and then we're going to stand in front of God giving an account of our life. And I say this to my, I have to say this to myself, and I'm going to say it to everybody. Sin is not a game. We have to quit playing around with sin and letting it come in and take root in our lives. And I'm not talking about the, like the big sins. Like I'm talking about the ones that we try to hide. The ones that no one else knows about that we think, oh, it's okay, no one knows about it. Those are the kind of sins that stay with us, right? We have to quit playing as if we are a Christ follower, follower and actually be a Christ follower. So Acts 30, 19 says, repent and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. It's not about just feeling bad when you sin and go, eh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. It's about asking for forgiveness and repenting. So, uh, oh, well, wow, I went a lot longer than I thought I'd gone. <laughs> I'm going to... Thank you. Um, don't worry, I'm almost done. All right. So I, uh, I found this uh, YouTube page, and it's uh, Dr. Frank Turek. He's an apologist and an author. But what he does, he goes, he goes to college campuses and uh, gives lectures and lessons on scripture and Christianity. And he opens the mic up for students to come and ask him questions, which I, I don't know if I would ever do that. <laughs> but he had, on one of the videos I watched, a young lady watched up, walks up to the mic and asks this question. She goes, I am an atheist, and I don't believe in God. Does that mean I'm going to hell? That's, oh. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, answer, pretty easy to answer, right? But he looked at her and gave a great response, probably something I wouldn't have thought of because I'm more blunt than he is. He says... Uh, to her, which applies to her, and I think it applies to all of us as well. He says, if you don't want to spend time with God now, God is not going to make you spend time with him later. Right? Is there sin in your life that you're letting stick around? Like I said, not the big, not the big noticeable sins, you know, like the, the 15 people, right? Are you, are you letting those sins that no one knows about stick in and take root? Those ones at the moment you feel bad and you push it aside and you don't think about it later on. I know I have those. And when the next time that temptation comes, it becomes easier and easier to get fall right into that sin because, oh, I can just forget about it. What sins do we need to repent of? That's a powerful message uh, from one center to another one. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us, Thomas. Um, and he's given, he's, Thomas has given us the invitation 
Do you want to repent and meet Jesus now? Or do you want to wait and be separated from him forever? That is your choice. I want to invite you to just bow your head. Let's pray together. As our heads are bowed, I just want to invite you to answer the question that Thomas has presented for us. Do you want to follow Jesus or not? It's that simple. Do you want to be forgiven of your sin or not? Do you want to trust in him or trust in yourself? If you want to invite Christ into your heart, if you want to ask him to forgive you of your sins, and you want to invite him to come in right now, I want to invite you to pray this very simple prayer. This simple prayer, there's nothing magical about it. It's not that. What it is, is acknowledging what the Scripture says. That's all it is. And giving and making a declaration in your heart that you want to trust Jesus. So I want to invite you right now to do that. Will you pray this very simple prayer? Will you, just between you and God, you can remember it with these four very simple words. The first one is sorry. God, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. I'm sorry for the sin in my life. I'm sorry I've rejected you up to this point in my life. The next word is please. Please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my life and please save me. And please become the Lord of my life. And the last two words are thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for giving me hope and a future. Father, for those who prayed that prayer for the first time today in a minute, I pray that you would be with them right now and and always, Father. Help them as they are getting to know you better and love you more. I pray that you would guide them as they are growing in this faith. And we rejoice that they have turn from their sin and turn to you for the others of us who have already accepted you may we also grow in our faith may we continue to get to know you better every day and love you more every day may we continue to seek you and whenever we are tempted to sin may we remember that you have given us a way out and for those who are still waiting For those who are still keeping you at an arm's distance, who have not given their heart over to you, I pray that you would continue to remind them you love them, but how much you want to spend eternity with them. May they turn to you also. We give you thanks, Father, for loving us so much in your name. Amen. I want to invite you to, or let you, remind you that this altar is always open for you. If you need one of us to pray with you, me or Brenda will be here. We'll be glad to pray with you. We just simply ask you that you get our attention. If you don't get our attention, we won't bother you. But if you would like for us to, we would be glad to pray with you. Just let us know. Remember, Jesus will forgive you of your sin. And he wants to be your savior. Now the choice is yours. I want to invite you as you're able to please stand. And as we stand and sing this next song, this altar is open for you. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me. of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God I'm no For I am a child of God. 
We be seated for just a moment, and before I say anything else, I want y'all to know y'all are a fantastic worship team. I mean, I love hearing you sing, and it is beautiful to hear you sing. Um, so, uh, Thomas, uh, go ahead and start working on the next sermon. All right, because we will be we'll be inviting you to the ne- you know getting ready for the next one. So, uh, so uh, yeah, you got a year, man. Okay, all right, excellent job. Thank you. For sharing your heart, sharing the Word of God. We appreciate that so much. Our college age group and our young adults are in great hands, aren't they? Uh, so, yeah, you can. Thank you. Oh, I was talking about Jessica. Yeah, okay. I'll just make sure you. All right. Um, 
before we bring up some folks to there, we have some folks who are going to be joining the church. Before I do that, if you are new here, if you've been here before and hadn't had a chance to meet you, I would love to visit with you. As Thomas told you, I'll be out in the lobby. Just exit the doors, hang a left, come over here and see me, and I would love the opportunity to get to know you a little bit more. And I also, uh, if you need help with your walk with Christ, anybody in here, if you've got questions, we want to help you out. Let us know how we can help you. Let us know. You've got to let us know. We can't figure it out on our own. You can talk to any one of us on staff. You can email me, Jimmy at Woodbine Church. Grab my mine and Brenda's uh, cards out there. It's got our num phone numbers on there. Contact us. Let us know how we can help you. We want to do that. So we have a time of joy. We have some folks who are going to be joining the church today. I want to invite all of those who are going to be joining to come on up. Come on, come on up. Yeah. Ready? All right. You know, I, I'm in front of people so much, I forget that being in front of people sometimes make other people uncomfortable. And so it doesn't make me uncomfortable, but I am just so excited to be able to introduce, some, for some of you, introduce you to some of these folks. Some of you, you already know these, uh, these good folks. Uh, and I'm going to step right over here, and y'all step right over there, because in just a second, I'm going to step out. And after they are, uh, have joined the church and we have our closing prayer, I want you to come by and welcome them in to the family, okay? They're already here. You're already part of the family. Just making it official. Uh, I want to start right over here with the, the pulleys. Um, we are, this is Patrick and Victoria. They have two precious children and one coming in December, right? Yes. Uh, it's uh, Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, it's Tyler and Josephine and to be named later. Okay, uh, uh, and so we have them. Then we have Stacy Holloway here. Stacy has uh, three boys that are over in our children's ministry, and they're uh, Damian and Lincoln, and I'm missing one. Alex, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I missed that one. But they're over there in the children's ministry. And then you got a chance not only to see Victoria and to see Cecilia. This is the Link family. Uh, to see Cecilia uh, be baptized. But uh, this is Nick and Emily. And this is Cecilia. And then, hold on. I know that you, I, I, Isaac and Beatrice and Marion. Okay, yeah, I had it. I had it all the time. No, uh, the other three little ones are next door. So we are, ex our younger ones are next door. We are excited. Uh, there are questions I ask everybody. Do you know Christ as your Savior? Yeah. Have you been baptized? Yeah, y'all too. We saw that. Yeah. Uh, do you believe the Bible to be the Word of God? Yeah. And then will you support the church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Will you do that? All right. What about, let's welcome them in. Woohoo! All right. So, what a great, great day. I'm going to ask Miss Brenda to come up. She's going to close us out with prayer. But before you leave, all you Woodbiners, come by and introduce yourself. If you already know them, welcome them into the family. Uh, if you don't know them, get to know them, all right? Because these are great folks. Thank you so much, and welcome to the family. Miss Brenda? Thank you, Pastor. I wanted to mention to you, see kids, registrations out there, but we want to invite every one of you here on campus on Wednesday nights. Adults, we want you here learning about God. I'll be right behind them, so sign up for both. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are awesome. We came as sinners, and you covered us with the blood of Jesus, and we can walk through the Holy Spirit and show others about you. So God, when we walk out these doors, let our face be uplifted because Christ reigns in us. And let us be able to tell many about your saving grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come see these folks, they'd love to see you. He's our rescuer, and he's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Know how sweet the sound, you know how.